Hi all and welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro and our ongoing video user guide for APT where in this video we'll be taking a quick look at the plan editor. Now this is just going to be a quick overview as this can be quite a complex subject depending on how you use the editor and especially when you combine it with the functionality of session control and uh, in the latest version that has had its functionality greatly increased so quite a complex subject that I'll be covering more in a few videos in my deep dive series but for today we're just going to take a general look I'm going to start by looking at the differences between using a DSLR and a uh, dedicated Astro Cam what's the same about them and go through each one individually to let you know what the differences are and how they work um, just a note when you're using the plan editor the plans you create are specific to the type of camera you have set up so if you create a plan for your Canon or Nikon it will not show up when you connect a dedicated cam and vice versa so we'll get straight into this and take a look at uh, the differences between the two of them so first up a quick look at the differences between the two types of cameras on the left we have a, a DSLR a Canon or Nikon imaging plans and on the right we have the dedicated astro cam editor now the first thing you'll notice is the differences in the settings on the right um, there are different ones because the cameras work totally different uh, what's listed in the display on the left in the uh, plan details is slightly different for the columns you have available and then there is the differences you don't see straight up um, each plan type has uh, various types of plans um, they ha all have your lights your darks flats bias dark flats and focusing plans but each type of camera has one additional plan that is totally separate from the other so that's a difference you won't see at the moment until we get into them and the other difference you don't see is your um, scripts and commands when you go into your commands the list of commands available for a DSLR will be slightly different to the ones you can get for your dedicated Astro Cam simply because it has settings for your binning etc and gain and everything else whereas uh, the DSLR has slightly different ones there but they're the main differences between them um, not a lot that you can really see except for the exposure settings and I'll cover all these in their individual um, descriptions so now we're going to get into the common features between the two of them uh, to access your plan editor you can either click on the edit button here or if you're on the camera tab you can just double click on the uh, screen here and it will open up the plan editor so for the common features we'll start at the top here with your import and export settings um, with this you can import or export plans if you wanted to copy them to another computer or if you've been using the simulator mode to create plans you can export them out of that and import them into your live program so that's just a simple one there um, next you have your plans to edit or create um, from the drop down list you can add new plans and or load one that you've already got done um, so that's just simple that's just a list of the plans you have available or to create new ones um, then you have these two buttons here um, if you use dithering you can specify not to dither on a particular plan um, it's really only light plans you'll get dithering on anyway by default on your darks and everything else they don't dither on those but um, you can specify just for this plan not to dither then you have a vertical plan and what this is it is instead of working across and taking uh, all the images on one line which is the default behavior so in this one it'd go to take two exposures there take two exposures there take two exposures there it works vertically so it'll take one exposure one exposure one exposure and one exposure and then go back to the top and start again until the total number of exposures is done now this requires that each line have the same number of exposures um, so you need to make sure of that and times you might want to use that is if you've got a camera and you're using filters and you may not get enough time to run through uh, all the filters by doing them one at one line at a time so you might want to mix up what filters you're using at the time so that's the sort of thing that can do next we have the name of the currently active plan uh, in this case the default test that comes with uh, APT 
and from here you can delete that particular plan or you can clone it as another type of plan um, this is handy if you've got a light plan you want to do dark frames or if you have a uh, flat pl flame frame plan that you want to use for uh, a dark flat plane a flat plan plane I kept saying plane um, so you can clone it and it'll copy it to the exactly same uh, one under the different types of plans so that's your cloning and copying there um, then we go down on the bottom down here now these are your controls to move your uh, various lines you can switch them around and change them around up and down that's all that is pretty basic and then you've also got the delete button whichever line is selected click on delete and it will delete that line from the plan uh, right at the bottom here you have uh, your dura expected durations um, this can be thrown out a bit if you're using scripts or or commands and it just gives you a general idea of how long it might take for you to do the actual whole plan and then your total lights so how many your time your total lights going to take uh, in your plan if you're using it um, don't rely on this too much for setting up your actual full session simply because due to pauses and um, things like autofocus or meridian flips etc uh, dithering and that in between them if you've got five hours of imaging time you're not going to be able to get five hours of total lights simple as that I allow an extra 30 seconds for each one when I'm doing my calculations for how many exposures to take then uh, over here we'll skip the exposure settings here they'll cover that next um, but update current it's simply if you change a setting up here and hit update current it will update the one that's currently highlighted or you can add it as a new line so if I click on add as new line you can see it's added the same one as a new line I'm just going to delete that for now because I don't want an extra line in there and that's there then you have your scripts and commands uh, this opens up so you can get into your different list of commands these are internal commands that you're you can run through APT um, but you can also if you're smart enough you can create VBS scripts uh, and put the path to the script in script in here and APT will run that script for you um, under the commands in your written user guide you can have a look through there and see what commands are available for each type of camera as well as uh, any scripts that you can use uh, any variables you can use in your scripts now the other one you have down here right at the bottom is your wait till wait until script to end um, basically the internal commands of APTs that you use through here um, APT will automatically wait until they complete before moving on to the next step in your imaging plan but if you're running an external plan uh, APT generally by default won't wait until it finishes it'll just go straight to the next one by doing this it waits for the command to finish and then it'll move to the next one I'll wait for the script to finish and move to the next one and that's it for the common features uh, next I'm going to just move in and have a quick look at the DSLR and then the uh, CCD camera okay so I have here the DSLR screen which we're going to start with um, and then first of all we're going to take a look at the editing for your exposures here uh, basically it's the same as what you would do normally anyway uh, of course you've got ringy ringy thingy up in the corner here if you want to use that um, so you can change your bits and pieces in here if you like uh, but the exposure is your actual exposure time uh, the ISO you want to use for that one um, the pause between images which is counted after the end of the, the an image so it doesn't pause when you first start it but it will pause at the end of an image and do that between each image and how many images you want now if you leave the ISO blank um, it will take it as you want to use the ISO that you um, previously had set so whatever ISO was set if you're doing something in the cam tab and you had a different ISO set down here um, it will use that instead so it's best to set your ISO in here to make sure you don't lose it um, then you have your quality settings depending on the camera is uh, what you have available here um, generally you'll probably be using raw 
so that'll store as your raw files um, then you have your AV if you want to change uh, the AV supported by your camera I've got a big list in here but that's because I don't actually have a camera lens selected um, so if your camera supported it'll have a list of the AV settings for your aperture in there um, if you have a telescope connector you'll generally have that on no change because you can't, generally can't change the AV and then you have filters just in case you're using a filter with your DSLR you have a filter wheel or whatever you can pick the filter you want to use there um, of course no change because there's no filter wheel it's not one that people with uh, DSLRs unmodified will often be using but you may have one there um, so that's the main difference in your exposure it's just the command what you can use to set your exposure up uh, another difference as I said one you don't see before is the plan types now as I said light plans dark plans flats bias focusing and dark flats are all the same um, but what you have in your DSR is auto light plans and what these ones are is um, plans that will use your auto exposure features of your camera to take the image rather than you setting an exposure time um, I haven't had personally a use for this but it could be handy for taking eclipses and things like that's been suggested so you may want to do that um, but it's not one I've used at all and we'll have to see how it goes later on but that's the one you don't see and that's the difference between the plan listing for a DSLR and a, a CMOS camera so it will actually set the exposure time itself if you use that so that's the uh, differences there and like I said the other difference is the available commands you have um, you can go through all these and have a look at them either in the user guide, written user guide or just by clicking on them uh, it'll tell you what they do and there's quite a number of them you can change your focusing you can uh, select a new target um, you can load images uh, you can go to another plan next plan let you have finish one plan then start the next plan um, rename your targets everything so there's all different ones in there you can use uh, the ones I've used most commonly of course are um, go to plus plus if I'm selecting a new target uh, but um, up till now you need to actually go to and also set object name uh, which is down the bottom down here so you can set the object name etc etc um, or you might have a an end of night sequence you might want to do something like that where you'll park the scope um, do darks maybe or or lights or whatever or shut down your computer um, so there's a number in there you can use so that's what it does there and that's the differences between what commands are available and the commands that are available in the other one um, I don't know if you can change your yeah. I'll have to go have a look in there and see what else you can and then of course if you want an external script you can run an external script it'll ask you for the path um, parameters you want etc 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 and what the command line I don't use scripts because I'm not smart enough to make one so I won't go into them too much at the moment so I'm going to cancel that but that's your DSLR version next I'll just move in to have a look at the uh, CCD and CMOS version so here we are for the CCD and CMOS version and again it's the exposures details here that have changed slightly um, your exposure length that's of course the same uh, then, but you have instead binning and depending on um, what camera you have is the binning levels you can set here uh, just a note while it does say one times one there you can enter in it as that but generally because your binning is the same both horizontal and vertical you can just enter a single number and APT will automatically convert it to the correct one then you got your gain setting um, if you don't set it here again it uses the last gain you used so you might want to change that um, and update current again now offset you can offset the dark point from the left hand side of your screens um, depending on the camera depending on what you might want to use so that's uh, something you'll have to research with your camera by default I pretty much use just 30 but that's just me um, then you have the pause so the pause between your images um, 
you can vary that uh, something that's handy if you have uh, a non-cooled camera it can allow the camera to settle just a bit between images and then of course the image count for the total of them uh, and finally you have your filter if you're using a filter wheel you can change your filters here otherwise it'll just use the last selected filter as it's uh, no change there um, again you have a different type of plan you can use right down the bottom you have a mixed frame plan but the thing is with this you need to have a mechanical shutter on your camera and most uh, of the modern ones the CMOS cameras don't have mechanical shutters they use an electronic rolling shutter so it's probably something you may never use um, but you can try it and see how you go um, it's like I said it doesn't work with with rolling shutters so it's pretty much something you're not really going to use unless you add an additional um, mechanical shutter to it I've got to test this out I've got a uh, dark filter on my filter wheel that uh, I want to see if that works with those plans it just means you don't have to worry about uh, having separate plans for your darks your lights your flats etc so that's done there and of course the scripts and commands you have a different lot of commands as you see you've got CCD gain uh, cooling the camera offsets your power for the camera warming etc etc a lot of these are the same between them because they involve more moving and the object names and things like that but there are the, these little ones which deal just with a CCD or CMOS camera so that's the different differences in there so cancel out of that and other than that everything's the same so that's how you create your use your plan editor um, once you've got a plan created when you know your exposure and everything just click OK and it'll import it into your image over here, into your uh, list over here so you can see what your plan is and it'll also tell you down the bottom uh, your expected plan du duration like that one's 32 seconds and two exposures for a total life of 20 seconds so you can run that uh, that way but as I said previously don't set your uh, number of images to the total lights equaling the amount of dark sky you have because you will never get it all completed um, you may get all but one uh, but depending on what happens with your dithering and, and um, meridian flips etc and autofocus you, know, you may lose three or four half a dozen depending on how long your imaging images exposure is but that's it for the uh, plan editor for now as I said I will at a later time be going into a more detailed one where I cover not only the plan editor but working it all in with uh, session craft and um, your session control in there but that's going to be probably two or three videos on its own in my deep dive series but for now I just wish you all clear skies and I will see you next time bye